Greetings, Guardians. My name is Bife here. So, ten weeks in, we finally have some more plain text understandings about what the Veil is, thanks to the Veil containment missions. I say missions, it's really an interaction every week, but still, you get the ability to understand more about the Veil, and that's a very important subject to a lot of us. After ten weeks worth of these, we have scattered bits of Veil knowledge, and they've all come together to make something of a more conclusive answer as to what the Veil is. For context, I don't think this is the end of the Veil containment logs, I think there are plenty more still to come, so consider this perhaps to be an extended part one of the various findings and the explanation of what the Veil is. There will be more videos in this series, I know I did a big what is the Veil video in the past, but we are not done with this topic, I think, not by a long shot. But first, a word from our sponsors over at Advanced GG. I'm actually really hyped about this particular sponsor because you guys have been really excited too. We went ahead and did that campaign with the Ice Shakers and tons of you tweeted pictures back at me with them. I'm so glad to see that everyone is enjoying it. Luckily for everyone who is enjoying it, we're activating a wonderful code for everybody for a discount again. You can go ahead and uh, access code BYTH35 for 35% off of your next Advanced GG purchase. Really exciting stuff, and for those of you who don't know what Advanced GG is, it's a green tea caffeine supplement that is built specifically for gamers. It helps with improved focus, concentration, and memory, it will give you faster reaction times and decision making for those moments in the crucible where you absolutely need to get that split second decision making right. It reduces error rates, it's sugar free, keto friendly, vegan friendly, and they have a ton of great flavors. Personally, when it's one of my off days, I'm really looking for some blueberry pomegranate, so that's been real nice lately. However, if you want to go ahead and grab all of that, go ahead and check the links down below. My referral link is in there as well. And remember to use code BYF35, that's BYF35, all caps, in order to get 35% off of any of your orders. Thank you again so much to Advanced GG, and thank you in particular because they're also giving us some prizes to give away on the GCX Charity Marathon. More on that at the end of the video. Anyway, back to the video. Before we get into the actual Veil containment alone, I'm going to once again implore Bungie to move the node that's used to access it to a part of the map where it can actually be seen. I, I get it, it is actually inside the Arcala complex, way down in Veil containment, and that is actually in the bottom left corner of the map. But please, so many people have missed this, it can't be seen. Put it somewhere central, put it next to the main story replayability node. You know, like, th this has to be somewhere where players will actually be able to see it. So, yeah, that's, yet again, I'm imploring Bungie to do that. Don't know how tricky that is, especially considering that it's in live game now, but, hey, you know, if that's at all possible, I would really, really strongly advise it. Anyway, after ten weeks in, and the seasonal story from the Season of the Deep, all of the research that came from our time in Lightfall, and every other little tidbit, we now have some plain conclusions about the Veil. The Season of the Deep cutscene is where we should really start off, and it starts us with the quick little insert about how the predecessors of the Witness discovered a linked twin presence to the Traveler, which they called the Veil. They studied the Veil, and through it learned about the powers of darkness, and that its power was linked to thought and consciousness. They believed that the Veil could be used in order to bring control over the chaos of the light. They tried to strengthen the connection between the Traveler and the Veil in order to create this degree of control. Had this succeeded, it would have allowed them to attain their so-called final shape. However, the Traveler rejected the connection and fled. Now we find the Veil on Niamuna, and we can learn more about it from those first ten reports of Chioma Essi. Let's actually start with what's stated in the second Veil containment log, aka the one after the main Veil mission. Geoma Essie. Research log. The Veil. I don't even know where to start. When we landed on Neptune, there was... something... waiting for us. An, an alien structure. It's an electromagnetic anomaly. No mass, but a tangible surface area. It's like a thesis statement to the von neumann wigner hypothesis. It's definitely paracausal, like the Traveler. Maya calls it the Veil. She says she heard the name in a whisper when... when she looked at it. When I asked her who whispered, she said it was... her own voice. 
This is the first real analysis of the veil, and it tells us a lot about this object in very unclear terms. It is an object capable of defying the conventional laws of physics like the Traveler, aka its paracausal, and it also tells us that it's an electromagnetic anomaly. Chioma Essi also mentions the von neumann wigner hypothesis and, um, yeah, this, this gets into quantum science. I am going to try my best to condense down the basic understandings of it. I had to brush up on it this morning before actually reading this script, so take everything I say with the caveat that I'm not a real scientist, and there is probably a real scientist out there in my audience shaking their head at some of my explanations of this, but I will try my best. So, what is the von neumann wigner hypothesis? Well, it basically operates on the assumption that the act of measuring something in a quantum state more specifically, it's about the idea that if you are consciously witnessing or are conscious of a quantum phenomena, then that will cause it to change. This is a general point out there in quantum science, so let's go and, uh, yeah, uh, explain some basics of quantum science. It's best to explain this in the context of a quantum computer because, I mean, it's an easier format to understand it, basically. So. Why is a quantum computer different from a normal computer? Let's start there. Normal computers use bits and quantum computers use qubits. Bits are data that realistically only get measured in two values, zero or one, you know, binary. Simple as that. Code is really just a long line of zeros and ones at the end of the day. And ultimately, this means that your normal conventional computers only have two states in which they can present data on the smallest level, a zero or a one. Qubits, on the other hand, are found within quantum computers and are used because they can be in the state of both 0 and 1 at the same time. This is a weird property that's called superposition. If you think of it in a wave format, it's basically saying that this particle, maybe a light particle, can be at any point within its wave at any one moment. Superposition basically states that it's all of these values all at once, and this allows quantum computers to do things much faster than normal computers. Basically, the fact that quantum computers have qubits, which are constantly in superposition, means that they're able to calculate things a whole lot faster because they're able to get all of the answers all at once. And when you do eventually have the answer that you're looking for, you can observe it and superposition stops and you will have your answer. Yes, you need to go ahead and double check, but it's still one of those things which makes quantum computing way faster than typical computing. Superposition is the really important part of all this, the whole property where it can be all of these things at once, and the reason for that is because superposition stops when someone measures it. The von neumann wigner hypothesis is a theory that states that consciousness is a filter that can measure quantum mechanics, and therefore causes superposition to collapse. In other words, if you actually observe or are conscious of a quantum process, you are stopping it from going ahead properly, or you will stop superposition. In other words, if this is applying to the veil, basically Chioma is saying here that the veil's very existence is undeniable, but that the lack of its mass and yet its tangible surface area is perhaps only something that we see because we are consciously observing it. It only appears to us in this way because there are quantum mechanics within the veil and perhaps that's forcing it to present itself in this way, and if it does so, maybe it's because we are conscious of it. This is all really over the top as far as everything is concerned, and it's way beyond what most of the other lore is suggesting, but I think it's worth understanding, even if I'm giving what is probably the most butchered explanation of quantum mechanics that has ever been seen on YouTube. Either way, uh, yeah, the veil is very much linked to consciousness. And it is a big web of consciousness. This is something that we learn in the latest Veil Containment Log. And that tells us this. This thing, the Veil, it's... It's some kind of web of consciousness. Just like the Vex Network, but organic instead of artificial. It makes sense why the Vex want it. Paracausal simulations. There'd be no stopping them. So from this, we know that the Veil is a paracausal web of consciousness, and that there appear to be quantum mechanics within the Veil that means it'll appear a certain way to us simply by the act of us being conscious of it or observing it. 
Yeah, god, I hope that the science stuff in this is correct, otherwise I'm gonna sound like such a fool. But either way, that's my best understanding of it. Moving back to the first log, though, Chioma Essi states the following about the real first contact with the Veil made by various teams on Neomuna. Everyone on the initial survey team died. The minute they touched the object, they entered a state of... of brain death. All of them. To make it worse, the EM radiation emitting from the Veil is causing psychological distress in the Exos that came with us. They've all described moments of intense, hallucinogenic reverie. Some of them went silent and rigid and just... stopped. Maya called it billboarding. Something from the early days of Clovis Bray's ExoMind project. She doesn't seem afraid, or surprised. She's convinced this thing, in her own words, she says, it'll be our salvation. So everyone in the initial survey team died within moments of them actually making contact with the Veil. I don't know about the rest of you, but this reminds me distinctly of the FWC device and how it's only truly usable by Exos because all human subjects go completely mad. The interaction that the Exos had with the Veil is even more interesting because Chuma Essie states that the EM radiation was causing psychological distress in all of them, that they went into a hallucinogenic state of reverie, that they were perhaps experiencing something more. This is something that is expanded upon later in the fifth research log. Exos are going to be a key part of all this, and they have some key importance, and the fifth log kind of reveals that it's probably because of the way that they were created. Take a listen. Geoma Essie, research log, Exos. Mai and I have built a working theory around the deaths of our Exo crewmates after their exposure to the Veil. According to Maya, Exo mines contain a combination of Vex radiolaria and something known as clarity. Radiolaria are alien microorganisms living within a hive mind state. Or, I suppose more accurately, a community. Clarity is... Maya described it as a paracausal power derived from an alien artifact. Something Braytek had kept secret. Something Maya. Maya thinks the Veil and this artifact are related. That the paracausal force from the Veil overloaded their exomines. Unraveled them. It's like taking a powerful magnet to an archaic magnetic storage device. Full erasure. So in this log, we start to understand what's going on. The consciousness of the Exos is being overloaded by the sheer volume of paracausal power of the Veil, and that it's unraveling the state of flux in their Exomines, where clarity and Vex mind fluid exist in combination and balance. At least, that's my best interpretation of what's being stated here. Essentially, if that's correct, this is more proof that the Veil is just a massive web of consciousness. We've also seen notes from the Ghost that the Veil's radiation works a little bit like a magnetic field too. In other words, it's stronger whenever you're closest to the Veil, but it's still measurable further out over great distances. This is something which Strand users have reported and verified as well. Hunters that have used Strand in particular have noted that it is strongest when actually on Neptune in Neomuna, but that also it is possible to feel it further out on planetoids such as Nessus, where the weave itself, the weave of Strand, is still a little bit trickier to tap into, but it's most definitely there. They can still use all their powers nonetheless. So the Veil's bands of power emanate out from it and reveal the web of Strand as they go. We've already talked a lot about Strand, I have a lore video on it on this channel, but we've also linked the idea that Strand is essentially the web of consciousness and darkness that binds everyone together. So this is realistically quite reasonable as an assumption, because again, the Veil, as best we know, has a lot of things to do with consciousness as well, so it makes a lot of sense. If we assume that Strand and the Veil's powers of consciousness are linked, we can perhaps interpret that the Exomines are literally being unraveled by this power of Strand because they're being held together, and emphasis here on the word held, and this is to do with the interaction of Strand and consciousness. Strand matter is naturally very unstable. 
We learned through our use of it that the power of Strand is something that is only able to be properly manifested when you're not trying to hold a vice-like grip on it. You can't exert massive control over Strand because it will rebel, it will unwind itself from your control. It must be allowed to flow freely through you, and if a user is able to manipulate it properly, they're not controlling it so much as guiding it, working with its flow. Exomines capture and contain consciousness as a result of their interaction between clarity and Vex Radiolarian mind fluid. So it's possible that the exposure to this pure power of Strand is literally unraveling that delicate balance that's built into their minds. Maya Sundaresh and Chioma Essi eventually were able to design a prototype interface for the Veil that theoretically allows the Veil's processes to be reversed. Instead of the Veil unraveling consciousness, it could instead create and bind consciousness together. It's this process that led to the deaths of dozens of Veil scientists and required dead exos to be used properly. A single being was created by all of this experimentation, with dead exos feeding data into a single conductor chair. The individual that emerged from this process was Lakshmi too, an exo who had been reborn but was also given some of Maya Sundaresh's own memories, and even her voice. The Veil is a mystery that we're still unraveling at this point, pun not intended, but I think the important part to say is simply this. The Veil is not only the source of Strand, but also appears to be a locus point for the web of interconnected consciousness that expands out through the whole universe. If Maya Sundaresh was able to implant her own memories into Lakshmi too, then it's possible that whole personalities and memories can be transferred through the Veil. It makes me also then wonder this. Do those memories get stored very far back? How far back do those memories go? Is it an entire record of the universe? If so, then that would align with what was stated by Dima Gorionov, the Bungie employee who posted on Twitter talking about what the Veil was as far as its concept art is concerned. And perhaps more importantly, in lore terms, if it does have memories that go all the way back in time, maybe it remembers the Witness and its people. In the time when they discovered this new cosmic phenomenon and believed it could be their salvation. There will be more to understand about the Veil, but for now, we at least have a baseline understanding that the Veil is a connective network and locus point of consciousness throughout the universe, the source of the power of Strand, and something very dangerous, filled with darkness. That's all from me for now. I've been holding off on covering Veil containment for a while here, and predominantly I think that that was the correct move. Covering it bit by bit each week feels a little bit exhaustive for a two minute audio log. I don't want to wear things out immediately, but if things do continue to pick up the pace and become much more consequential as the weeks continue, I will be making video content like that. But it's going to take a lot. Maybe you'll get an update every five logs or so, but don't expect me to be updating you every single week on the Veil. I want to get the broad brush strokes for you so that you can all sit there and have a more condensed understanding. I think that's what's useful and more respectful of your time when it comes to this. Because there are some logs which, I mean, will be relevant as lore topics later, but aren't necessarily worth talking about on their own. You know, the whole interaction with Siva and the way that Vex parts may have been used in the creation of the Cloud Striders is interesting lore, for example, but it's something that I'd want to cover alongside other bits and pieces as a full topic. If ever we return to Neomuna, that's probably when you'll see that kind of lore content that you might be missing otherwise. You need more context for some of this in order for it to properly tell a full story, basically. But if you did enjoy this, and if you're glad to finally have at least a few answers as to what the Veil is, then yeah, let me know down in the comments section, and also be sure to leave a like on the video. We finally know what the Veil is, hallelujah. And of course, if you want more Destiny content, go ahead and hit subscribe, and the bell next to subscribe to turn on those email notifications. One last quick thing before we end as well. If the correct sponsor has gone out in this video, you will have heard from me at the beginning that I am doing the GCX Charity Marathon. Again, my block is from 12pm Eastern Standard Time to 4pm Eastern Standard Time. I will be alongside Professor Broman. That is on the 26th of July. Come along, support the kids, 
and give generously. I am pretty sure that there will be more stuff that you can grab as far as emblems and destiny stuff is concerned, but also it's for a very good cause. Give generously. I'll see you all on the GCX Charity Marathon. There will be links to it when it's going live on Twitter. I'll also post on the YouTube community page. But thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy, go ahead and leave a like. And, of course, know that as per usual, your viewership as always has been quite enough for me. And that in the meantime, my name has been, my name is Bife, Parodasia Arastra. I'll see you, Starside. <laughs>